while I've been on my uh, Italian book tour promoting my book, Transgender History, uh, I've met many activists in different cities throughout Italy. And the day after I left Milan earlier this week, I heard from some new friends in Milan about, uh, in, in, in Milano about a trans woman who was attacked by the police. Uh, they sent me uh, videos. It was it was horrible. It was horrible to to see that. I mean that there were five or six police officers just beating beating this single solitary trans woman who was a sex worker. But sex workers have the right to be in public just like anyone else. Uh, my friend who sent me the um, uh, who sent me the video said. I know this woman, she lives in my neighborhood. I saw her on the street earlier, you know, that day. I said hello to her and then there she was on social media being beaten by the police a few hours later. Um, uh, I think what happened is tragically frequent. Uh, we don't see these things happen in the mainstream media all the time. Uh, but if you're a trans person, you know that these kinds of um, uh, this kind of violence happens with shocking regularity, and there's very little accountability uh, on the part of civil society for treating its transgender members as less than full citizens, and frankly, as less than less than full human beings. Uh, there is a kind of impunity uh, that uh, uh, there, there's no like fear of prosecution. There's no like fear of being held accountable on the part of many powerful people. And I would say particularly the, the police, uh, that the police, not just in Italy, but in other parts of the world, in the United States, in San Francisco, where I live, uh, it's a shockingly common thing that happens that police act towards marginalized and minoritized people uh, in ways that uh, is is despicable. Uh, you know, it, it's wrong. It shouldn't happen. Um, I'm, I'm worried that however much the kinds of violence that we saw directed against the woman in Milan, however um, uh, shocking it seems, um, that uh, it's actually becoming more more frequent, more common today. And that e even though these kinds of things happen, and we know that they happen, that there is a new political climate that we are living in right now that I think uh, exacerbates this longstanding structural problem where trans women um, are imagined as expendable, as disposable, as, as worthless uh, kinds of life. Uh, that in the political moment that we live in, where we're seeing many rising forms of uh, reactionary political movements, we're seeing the resurgence of fascism uh, in a way that is, is it, it reminds me of the 1920s and the 1930s. Um, again, history is repeating itself in that way. Uh, but this time, it's transgender people who are being targeted and scapegoated as um, uh, the vulnerable population that can be eliminated, that's imagined as expendable. Uh, and that I, I think it's, it is time for all people who, who believe that they're good people, uh, who care about the oppressed, who care about celebrating diversity, who believe that, um, that all lives are worth living. Uh, it is really time for them to take a long, hard look at what's happening at trans people, to not sweep this under the rug, to not imagine that it's marginal, to not imagine that it, it is unrelated to your life. Um, because I, I really firmly, truly believe that the targeting of trans people in this moment of history is part of a much broader reactionary movement to try to turn turn back the clock on the development of, of liberal or progressive society that we have seen over the last several decades since the social movements of the 1960s. Uh, uh, I, I'm reminded of the, the, you know, the saying, if they come for me, you know, 
in the night, they'll come for you in the morning. And uh, I, I think they're certainly coming for trans people right now. Uh, and that if you think that the repressive powers that are gaining uh, power in society right now will stop with trans people, you're, you're naive, you're foolish. Um, that, that there are those who want to try to put, put the genie back in the bottle and undo all of the social progress that we've made over the past you know, half century or 75 years or so, uh, since the 1960s, uh, and that it is really time for people who think of themselves as good people to rally around the transgender cause because it's our time now, but it could be your time later. Thinking about the future is really difficult right now because we're in a very hard moment in the political present. But one of the things I most uh, I find most inspiring about the study of history is that history teaches you that true difference is really possible. That that the reason the past can seem strange, uh, unfamiliar, is because of the change that's happened between then and now and that you realize that, that our present moment is something that has been, it's the outcome of the cumulative collective actions of people in the past making their world different than it was to begin with. And that just gives me hope because just as, just as we know that the present is different from the past, so too can the present be different from the future. And just as our present moment was the result of the actions of countless people doing things, uh, living their lives the way they wanted to, to live it, uh, taking political action, making art and poetry and music, uh, do, doing things that inspire people to live differently, we can do all of that in the present as well. You know, and that we in the present can make the future be different than our current current reality. Uh, uh, and and hi history to me t teaches that it's possible, you know, that, that it, it, the difference of the, between the past and the present is empirical evidence of the necessity of change, the impossibility of not changing. Historical change is inevitable. What the outcome of that change will be, we don't know. In many ways, it depends on the actions that we take in the present. But the fact that the future will be different from today, that, that's a given. So for me, that's why uh, I do the work in a, uh, in a kind of a anticipatory fashion. It's like I try to draw from the past in the present to imagine the future that I would like to live in. And I try to put those stories out in the world through my actions. I like to tell stories about how change is possible. I like to tell inspiring stories from the past about how marginalized people have in fact triumphed over adversity. Um, I like to tell the stories of how even how like repression has taken shape. Like tell the history of the prison, the history of the police, uh, the history of, um, of, of medicalization and psychiatrization. Uh, because when we understand that those, those huge social systems have actually been created by the actions of people, that they're not natural and inevitable, but that they're things that humans have made and subjected humans to, then I think it gives us hope uh, uh, for knowing that they can be undone by human action and that we can in fact build a social order that's one that we want to live in.